after I posted my last video on ratchets, I received many requests to go over a different method of motor sharing, differentials. That's why today I'm going to be going over what differentials are and how they can be used on a VRC robot. First, let's take a look at what a differential is. In short, a differential is a device that has variable outputs based on the difference between multiple inputs or vice versa. The advantage to using a differential for motor sharing is that, if used correctly, multiple motors can be used to power multiple outputs, but with the full power of all motors in the system. This is done by taking advantage of all possible states of the motors. If we have two motors, we have four possible states. Forward, forward, backward, backward, forward, backward, and backward, forward. Our two motors and their four states can power two separate systems with the power of both motors in both directions, provided they don't have to run at the same time. There are many possible differential mechanisms that can be used on a VEX robot, and many possible ways of constructing them. A quick disclaimer, a few of the examples reference previous VRC games and might not be relevant to the current game. The main styles of differential you will see on a VEX robot are the following. Number one, the core design. I'm calling it this because the only implementations of this design have involved two mirrored copies causing two spinning cores to be formed in the chassis. Last year, one of the Vexman teams used this design to share power between their drive and their tilter. They used 393 motor bearings to decrease friction. While this does make the system slightly smoother, it's not necessary in my experience. Here is an example that I built. It uses one of the outputs to power the drive, and the other output is diverted to power the lift. We can see that the lift uses the power of all four motors, as does the drive. Either the shafts connected to the motors, or the cores themselves, spin, depending on the difference in speed between the motors. If both motors spin the same way, the shafts will spin, spinning the wheels. If the motors spin in opposite ways, however, the chain that locks the shafts together prevents the shaft from spinning at all, as equal forces are acting trying to spin the shaft either way. Instead, this forces the cores themselves to spin, and the meshing gears close the differential. Number 2, the 4-bar design. This design includes a 4-bar linkage and a ton of gears. Systems similar to this have been useful in both tower takeover to share power with a tilter and in the zone to share power with a mobile go lift. To the best of my knowledge, a five-digit team from Colorado that I'll leave unnamed pioneered this design. In a system with four gears, the outside gears spin opposite ways. When the outside gears are forced to spin the same way, the gears lock up and don't spin. Because the four bar is allowed to pivot, instead of snapping the gears, as a locked up system like this usually would, the bars simply pivot and the pinions crawl across the big gears. When the pinions spin in opposite ways, however, the gears spin smoothly and the wheels on the chassis spin. Here's the example that I built for this style of differential. The four bar could act as a mobile go lift, effectively allowing the same four motors to power both the drive as well as another necessary robot function. Due to the absurd amount of gears on this drivetrain, it's not the smoothest to drive. If I were to rebuild this, I would shorten the chassis and reduce the amount of gears. Number 3, the hood design. I'm not exactly sure what to call this design, as I've seen it used for things other than hoods, but no other name really applies. I first saw this type of differential on some early designs this season. This differential works by having two motors always spinning in the same direction, but at slightly fluctuating speeds. One motor is on a bar that pivots around a shaft with the main flywheel, while another is powering said flywheel. When both motors spin at the same speed, the flywheel is powered by two motors. When one is slightly faster or slower than the other, the power of the flywheel decreases slightly, but the bar can be moved to a new position. Here is an example that I built. You can see that when both motors spin at the same speed, the bar stays in the same position. But when I speed up one side, the bar moves over to the other side. I can then stop it by moving both motors back to the same speed. Or I can move over to the other side. And so on. This type of differential could be used for a moving hood, such as one where you want to angle the shot from a flywheel, or one where you want to let the ball out of the system entirely. Here's an example of a differential of this type more relevant to this season. You can see that the hood can change angles depending on if you want to shoot the ball into the goal, or let the ball out the back. Lastly, I want to go over differential swerve drives. 
These are complex gear trains and chassis that allow for full 360 degree movement with full power in every direction. The wheels are in pods that rotate, similar to the wheels on a shopping cart. The difference in speed of the two motors determines if the wheels will be moving or changing orientation. Swerve drives in general aren't used much in VEX, as they often pose more challenges than they create due to their complexity. On the other hand, swerve drives are used quite frequently in FRC, as their robot's requirements and constraints are very different than the ones in VEX. Here are some examples made by Kyle from Team 81818X of some differential swerve chassis. I wasn't able to build an example for these, as I do not own enough of the necessary gears to build one. You can see the humongous amounts of gears in the drive and how much space they take up. Using differentials can be an effective way of sharing motor power between multiple different subsystems on your robot. As some people have requested I do, I'm sharing the CAD files for all the robots used in this video. Either check the link in the description or the main body of this forum post depending on where you're watching this. Remember that there are many more ways to use a differential than the designs I mentioned. These are simply the most common ones I see. I hope this video helped you and have a great change up season.